My name is Stephen Davids and in this video I will discuss the internet access on your Google website. You can also call it how to make your internet accessible via your Google website or you can also call it how to build your internet as part of your Google website. I will first discuss some advantages to this approach in two ways how you can make your internet part of your website. I will focus then on one way namely to use groups to access your websites and then lastly pay attention how to sign in to your website. The advantages of making your intranet part of your website is that if and when you have website name that is easy to remember such as ours namely babcall.training the person just go to the website wherever they are and then sign in into the internet there is no need to have two names or the main name specifically or two URLs to remember furthermore from the organization side it is also cost effective because you do not need to do your website is of course open to the public while your intranet is limited only to your members that you specify you give access to people to your intranet in two ways the first way is via the users where you add them as users and create them as a user with various policies and privileges in your organizational structure and organizations. However, the drawback as explained in the previous video of users is that you pay per user for Google and that is a relative amount of sometimes five dollars per month the other alternatives that you can use that is more cost effective and absolutely free is to give users add them to groups you specify that they need to belong to a google and they must have a google account and then you add them in the google groups Google Groups, in the Google Groups, every Google Group has an email address and this address of the Google Group is very important. For example, staff members I add to the staff group and their email address that they have is staff at Buckhorn. Learners, potential learners have the email address for their group learners spot at Buckhorn or training. These email addresses are important if you want to give permission to your website and specifically web pages later on. After you created the group, there is a group and there is the email address of the group again, this email address that you will use later on to grant permissions to the web pages. You add then the members. These are fictitious members. They must have a Gmail account. This uh, was also a test of a bug to see if a Yahoo.com mail works. It does not work. Email groups must have a Gmail account in order or to work, or they must have a domain account at the specific domain. You then go to your website and create your intranet web page as well as the sub pages of that intranet page. In this case, I have the following four sub pages for my intranet. You then set the permissions for your website. Sharing and permissions. 
and on your website the website permissions you then made the website of course the say is open to the public but then you set the groups that you will add to your intranet later on there i added the potential learners potential learner group as well as the staff member group having added them to the main page you then go to your intranet page and also i from you have to uh, uh, turn on these uh, uh, page level permission is uh, turned off at the main page then you go to your intranet page and there you turn your page levels permissions on turn it on it must be the turned on and then you add the specific what groups you want to add there this intranet page or this page is made available to potential learner group they can view it and to the staff members they can view it i'm the owner and no one else because the specific people can access this website specific people the children pages of this main internet page all inherit the same uh, permissions that was set there if I then wanted to set certain permissions perhaps for the staff so that people cannot use it the example student specific all I do in this case is the potential learners you delete it you can uh, I assume turn it on again but you delete them and then it will be happen so that learners will not have access to staff members site if I perhaps go to the moderators I can also turn off that other people do not see what is only available and link for the learners so it is important then that you if you want to deny a group uh, access to a page you do it here on that specific page turn the side levels permission on and uh, uh, so that it differs from the main intranet permissions set there when you go to your google docs that you want to add to your website your intranet i mean sorry to intranet or specific intranet pages you go to the settings of that document and you do not select a uh, restrict to what the center of learning you make it an unrestricted and an open document or form because some of your people that you added to the groups do not necessarily have a domain name in your specific domain like what the center of learning user but they are simply people having a gmail account so therefore you have this unrestricted the restriction they get then from the web page itself you then add to your intranet these specific documents you want these specific groups to see for example i just want learners to see a specific page and in this case, the example I used was, uh, it was I, I renamed it rubbish, but this is actually a form for registration. So in this case, then only learners have access to the uh, the specific form. If I now want someone to get access to my and to sign into my intranet. In this case, the fictitious learner Keith McDonald's, who was added into my group of learners, you just go to the website and then down under you will see sign in. Of course, he belongs to a group, you can't only press it once, but 
he must press it twice. And they will see Keith McDonald's can see the intranet. And when he signs into the intranet, because he is a learner, you will not see the pages of the staff because staff is there. You suppose also not. Um, most. This is just something I must remove. Certain scissors. Uh, learners will only be able to see learners, but I did not set the permissions for those other two pages as yet, which I must do. And then you can access the documents on the learner page. To recap then, we have discussed the advantages associated with having your internet as part of your public website. We discussed two ways to give people access to the internet. We then focused on the way to give people access to the internet by the much more affordable way of adding them to groups and then also focus on how to let them sign in. Thank you very much for watching this video. We love constructive comments. Please like and share this video.